All right, Shangri-La Frontier. Let's see what you got. Wait a minute. No, not this. <coughs> Gamers and anime fans, these two fandoms have a lot of similarities. Like the excitement for overpowered moves that can cover up an entire screen of hitboxes, the pleasure of a great story that helps us escape our busy lives, and the love for these amazing characters, especially the Rule 34. Both gamers and anime fans have so much in common that there are games made for anime fans, like Persona, Dragon Quest, Nekopara for FBI's Most Wanted, and of course, anime series that are made for gamers are not that rare. In fact, most isekai anime appeal to a lot of gamers, such as Overlord, Lag Horizon, SAO if you have bad taste. But what if I tell you that there is a new anime that is built for real gamers like you? Shangri-La Frontier is an amazing anime made for real gamers. And here's why you should watch it. Before that though, hit that like and subscribe button with the same amount of force as Anraka does when farming for ores. Join Otaku to find for more anime content. Shangri-La Frontier at first glance, I really thought that this was another isekai, because from how it looks with fantasy being its setting, I was ready to see a man born as a birdman who goes on a far fantasy adventure while building a harem. Instead, this is actually not an isekai. Despite the Nerve Gear looking thing here, it didn't commit an SAO to trap him in the gaming world. Because for once, there is an anime for gamers who's brave enough to be a little bit original. Rather, we follow Sanraku, who finds bad games enjoyable and he even reviews them. Sanraku is then introduced to this amazing game called Shangri-La Frontier that apparently broke the Guinness Book of World Record for game logins in one day. So if this game was real, Microsoft and Phil Spencer are already sending them emails. But I wouldn't really blame them, since the anime presented Shangri-La Frontier as a game that I bet you yourself would want to play, especially after a successful launch where no bugs were encountered. So this game was definitely not made by Ubisoft. Shangri-La Frontier is a game when you combine all of the amazing gameplay mechanics of Breath of the Wild's freedom for exploration, Soulsborne's game design for boss battles, Monster Hunter's addicting loot system, and none of EA's crap because this is an actual video game. But what I like about this anime is how it lets us experience how Shanfro would play as a game by letting Sanraku be the most relatable protagonist for gamers. Because Sanraku is a real gamer. When Sanraku booted the game, he immediately skips the prologue cutscene like your typical gremlin gamers. He spent a lot of time in character creation where he ended up building a meme character. He doesn't read tutorials, he farm a monster 50 times just to get their weapon drop, he grinded on his starting area for 2 hours, he sold his armor for more money and avoiding fat rolls, he challenged an area boss without saving, he praised the sun after a boss battle and died for not knowing where the save point is. This. This is the first time I feel like I've been called out so hard by an anime. That it really felt like I was the one playing Shangri-La Frontier and gosh dang it, this anime made me want to play this game. I mean, what games are out there that felt as immersive as this? And we are not even the ones playing it. We are watching a person play it, so gosh. It's a let's play anime. But my question for this anime was, what was its endgame? In Naruto, you have Naruto who wants to become a ninja mayor. In Demon Slayer, Tanjiro wants to save his sister. In Jujutsu Kaisen, the author hates you. But in Shangri-La, what is the end goal of its story? Is it about Sanraku finally enjoying a god-tier game? Is it about Sanraku finally meeting his secret admirer? Is it about Sanraku finishing the story of Shangri-La? Then, it happened. A unique monster spawn. <laughs> that is amazing. Shangri-La Frontier threw one of the wildest gaming concepts imaginable. Summoning a post-game monster by fulfilling a set of random tasks and there are only 7 of these monsters and there's even a guild built to hunt them. These unique monster spawns have a similar feel to the gloom hands you randomly encounter in Tears with the Kingdom or stumbling on a random boss room in Elden Ring that gives you a walloping. It even has cool mechanics like Lycagon turns invisible when the moon is shrouded. It even curses you when you die. The difficulty of the boss battle is absurd but it's beatable. 
This anime knows what gamers want in a boss battle. Shangri-La Frontier is an anime built for real gamers. I don't care about sitting on a large chair and being the Alden Mayor or saving a princess for the nth time. Unlocking lore puzzle and then fighting against awesome bosses? Give me that gaming experience! Another genius move by Shangri-La Frontier is how it moves its story. The plot advances for every gameplay mechanic as it is experienced by Sandraku. And honestly, that is the best formula you can have for an anime series that real gamers would enjoy because it unravels itself behind the eyes of a character that gamers feel relatable to. We explore the world of Shanfro as Sanraku unlocks new things like simple game mechanics on how to farm ores, the night and day cycle spawns, and especially the unique scenarios, which is another selling point of what truly really makes Shangri-La Frontier a god-tier game. Unique scenarios are designed to provide players with distinctive moments, acknowledging that every gamer's experience is inherently unique when playing a game. It is this individuality that adds a special touch to the gaming experience, and Shangri-La Frontier nailed that appeal. Since gamers tend to have different ways of playing games, like when fighting against bosses, you could defeat Ganon after waking up, you could try and solo Malenya with a dance pod. You could marry your visual novel waifu in real life. This is what I love most about Shangri-La Frontier because it gave us this incredible gaming concepts that game developers are now too afraid to try. Heck, Lords of the Fallen is a discounted Elden Ring. Gollum was a tragedy and it was so infamous that King Kong tried making Gollum look like a game of the year contender. Shangri-La Frontier is a must watch. It is an anime built for gamers and it makes you want to play it. As it stands, Shangri-La Frontier could be the best anime for gamers. But what about the best harem anime? Well, it turns out this fall season also has that and it's called 100 Girlfriends That Really Love You. Check this video out. Like and subscribe to Otaka Define for more anime content. This is Math, and stay awesome my dudes. Thank you.